The key to achieving success when treating with laser therapy, more appropriately termed photobiomodulation therapy, is to modulate the energy of a sufficiently large number of aging, injured, or malfunctioning cells to produce a measurable, clinically meaningful response. To adequately discuss photobiomodulation dosing, it's best to start by describing a few terms involved in its definition, most importantly, energy. Light's total energy striking a target is the addition of a large number of small packets of light called photons. The International System of Radiometric Units uses the joule as the unit of energy measure and the watt as the unit of power. At any specific wavelength of light, every photon contains exactly the same amount of energy. The brilliance or intensity of the light is a function of the density of photons striking a given surface area per unit of time, expressed as irradiance. This factor, irradiance, is critically important in achieving a therapeutic dose of light to target tissue. There are three key parameters to consider to achieve adequate irradiance and safely deliver an effective dose of light energy to target tissue. 1. The condition being treated. 2. The absorption characteristics of any intervening tissues between the light source and the target tissue. And 3. The mechanism of delivery. Consideration of the condition being treated requires an understanding of the location of the target tissues, taking into consideration how far the site of injury is below the skin's surface and what types of tissue the light's energy must travel through to reach it. Research of light's losses as it travels through the various tissue layers of skin, fat, and muscle has shown that light intensity at depth is proportional to the intensity applied at the skin surface. This is because, as light energy travels through tissue, photons will either be reflected, scattered, absorbed, or transmitted at proportions that depend on the tissue's optical characteristics primarily the tissue's absorption and scattering coefficients, which are wavelength-dependent. In order to achieve a clinically significant response, a sufficiently large number of photons must reach the target tissue and be absorbed by target tissue chromophores. Therefore, deeper target tissues require greater irradiances be applied at the skin's surface. Dosage is usually described in terms of the energy density, expressed as joules per square centimeter, required to appropriately saturate the target tissue with energy. Treatment time will be determined by the total joules required and the power needed to achieve optimal irradiance, or power density, in the target tissue. For a therapeutic dose of energy to safely and efficiently reach deep target tissues, the absorption characteristics of intervening tissue layers such as hair, skin, fat, and muscle must also be considered. Wavelengths of light in the near-infrared spectrum between 700 to 1300 nanometer are commonly used for photobiomodulation therapy and are within what is termed the therapeutic window so-called because these wavelengths not only penetrate through the appropriate tissue layers to varying degrees, but are also absorbed by the chromophore of interest in the mitochondrial membrane, cytochrome C oxidase, which mediates the photobiomodulation response. For photobiomodulation to induce any biological response, the light's energy must be transferred to the injured cells at the target tissues and absorbed by this chromophore. Further consideration of the light absorption characteristics of the intervening tissue layers must be taken into account. However, to minimize surrounding tissue heating and energy losses as light penetrates to those deeper target tissues. In order to examine these absorption characteristics, the relative contents of other non-target chromophores within tissues layers should be considered. It's important to note whether a linear or logarithmic scale is being utilized when evaluating the absorption of various wavelengths in each chromophore. For example, in this logarithmic table, it might appear as though there's a large difference in absorption of 980 nanometers of light in water. However, when viewed on a linear table, we can appreciate that the difference is not so significant from other wavelengths in this spectrum. 
Similarly, we can see that the most commonly used wavelengths in the near-infrared spectrum for photobiomodulation all have approximately the same absorption in another chromophore, hemoglobin. The primary chromophore that acts as a barrier to light penetration to deeper tissue layers, however, is melanin. Melanin has two times greater absorption at 810 nanometers than at 980 nanometers. Thus, when treating through dark hair or dark skin with high melanin concentration, it's more efficient to do so at 980 nanometers. The final factor in delivering an effective laser therapy treatment is the mechanism of delivery. For superficial conditions, off-contact treatment delivery is effective. One of the most significant obstacles to delivering photons to target tissue is reflection. When laser light enters the skin, through off-contact delivery, up to 6% of energy can be lost due to reflection off the skin. In addition, some light energy is lost due to scatter, or redirection of light from a straight path as it travels between different media. However, for deep tissue, on-contact delivery techniques prove more effective. The therapeutic advantages of on-contact delivery are tissue compression, minimize light energy losses due to reflection at the air-skin surface interface, as well as absorption and scatter in the compressed tissues, and blanching, which removes superficial blood from the area, minimizing incidental losses from blood absorption, and which attenuates photon penetration to deeper tissues. Therefore, when treating off-contact, more energy is necessary to deliver the same number of photons at depth that could be delivered in an on-contact mode. When treating on-contact, reflection from the skin and absorption and scatter from intervening tissues are reduced, resulting in more efficient delivery of energy. In summary, Delivering safe and maximally effective photobiomodulation therapy requires a working knowledge not only of the conditions being treated, but also of the tissue through which the light must travel to reach the injured tissues. Consideration of both and the ability to make adjustments in the mechanism of light delivery will ensure that an optimal dose is being delivered.